Today, we're going over JWB's property that is fully renovated and priced under 200000 That's a rarity these days. It'll be fully renovated, will generate positive monthly cash flow, and like we said, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. It's a good deal. <laughs> We are, and here we are. Yes, we are. And where we are is live on Facebook for the Thursday edition of the Not Your Average Investor Show. The JWB. Week, 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 week. I am your host, Pablo Gonzalez, and with me, as always, the man that we call GC because he's got genius concepts because he generates cash flow. <laughs> you are all in because he's a great co-host and because his name is Greg Cohen. Say hello, Greg. Can you do that face one more time? Because his name is Greg Cohen, that one? No, no, it's, <laughs> it's generous cash, though. Generous cash. It's the cash. Everybody, super excited <laughs> to be with you today. This is a special day here in the studio with my boy Pablo and with all of you. So grateful to be here. We are back in the hizzy, fo sheezy. I just yes. love that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where are we? All right. Today we are going over a property of the week. So the first thing you want to do is go to jwbinventory.com and download that property. And the first thing we're going to do, by the way, we got Joanna in the house. She's our community manager, so she can share the link in the chat so that you are able to just download it straight. But if you can, go to jwbinventory.com to download that property. If you're listening to us on the podcast somewhere in the near future, and where we're going to go right now is to my favorite segment of the show, the roll call. You ready, GC? Game on. Leo F. from California. Good morning, Leo. Carl Thompson is in the house. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a great week so far. We have, Carl. Thank you. John Henning is in the house. Good afternoon. Lee Bishop, the MVP of the Not Your Average Investor Show community. Great to see you two back in studio. Good afternoon. Indeed. Dean Curry is here. Hello from Ohio. Hello, Dean. Good to have you back with us. Drew Barnhill checking in from River and Post in downtown Jacksonville because he's here for something that's going to be a yeah. break. It. What, what, spoiler alert. Well, I didn't even think Drew was going to be able to be on the show because I know he's here in Jacksonville looking for a primary residence here in Jacksonville. And he, he, he asked Jen to tag along. Jen and Renee, I think, are tagging along and helping him in that decision. So I didn't even think we were going to be graced with your presence, Drew. Yeah. Happy happy to have you here as and, always. And uh, River and Post is a cool spot. River and Post cool. is cool. It's like a rooftop bar overlooking the river. All right, let's keep going with the, with the, with the uh, what are we talking about here? Marilyn Cotterman from Homosassa, Florida. Home of the manatees. She's in the house. Good. Welcome to have you back, Marilyn. Raj Bantu is back. Hello, Raj. Good to have you. Rosalind Riley is back from Marietta, California. Good to have you, Rosalind. And uh, Greg Stone from New Jersey. No snow today in New Jersey. That's a win up there, Greg. So we like to start the show saying, if you want to learn about owning rental properties in your portfolio, you're in the right place. If you want to learn about best in-house property management for rental property owners, you're in the right place. And if you want to get an edge on the Jacksonville market, because you're a real estate pro and you want some new opportunities, you're definitely in the right place. Next place to go to contextualize it, get a conversation going, go to chat with jwb.com, get you on the calendar, have a conversation with one of our experts, and uh, it's going to add value to your life. Speaking of adding value, GC, right now we got a bit, 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 breaking news. What's happening to, on Friday, GC? We have a really special event on Friday. Um, you know, for all of us here in the in if if you're on Facebook or if you're catching us on the podcast or if you're you know watching live here in the Zoom uh, chat, which is always super fun and exciting, right? We love the virtual you know interaction that we have, but there's really nothing like getting to spend some time together. Right. And on Friday, tomorrow, thanks to our community, organically, our community has come together to organize a meetup here in Jacksonville. And so for all of you who are not just local, but we have folks that are flying in from across the country, notably Ken and Carolyn Moline, uh, who have uh, flown from California to be with us. Um, you know, you're all invited to take part tomorrow. The cool thing is that we're going to be spending time on an actual tour of downtown Jacksonville. And we talk a lot about why Jacksonville is such a growth market and why downtown is, is a huge uh, opportunity for growth even beyond what Jacksonville has done over the past real estate cycle. It's, it's downtown growth is, a, is, a, is, is going to be big. Well, you're gonna get to see that. We have a downtown tour organized uh, by Jen and by our community. It's gonna be a personalized tour uh, by Alan DeVault, who's the CEO of Build Up Downtown. It's a local advocacy, advocacy group for downtown. It's going to be an incredible experience, and you're all invited. Uh, there's no cost to this, by the way. 
Like, how cool is that, right? It's my favorite price. There's no cost. There's no pitch. There's no sales pitch. This is literally just a community of not your average investors getting together, spending some time. Uh, so we're going to go on a tour of downtown. And then after that, we're going to go out for dinner and drinks. And you know who's footing the bill for that? Who's, who's footing the bill? You. Yes. <laughs> no, we're footing the bill for that. We literally are just getting together to hang out, talk a little shop, uh, you know, grow our relationships with our community here. And so if you're interested in this, literally, there's no sales pitch. You literally just have to reach out to Jen. Um, and I, I don't know if we have uh, her information in the chat. Maybe we could do that. Uh, maybe Johanna could help us out with that. But we're going to put her information in the chat here. Uh, and then you guys just need to reach out and let her know you're coming because uh, we do have to make arrangements. We have, you know, uh, what are they called? Tuck Tucks. We have Tuck Tucks <laughs> set up, which are... Um, you know, yeah, I don't know. What, what are, are they? Are they really tuk-tuks? I thought we had like two golf carts and, uh, and a bunch of scooters. They are tuk-tuks. <laughs> I, paid, I paid the invoice for the tuk-tuks. <laughs> such, a, such a rich cultural experience that you yeah. get when you come to Jacksonville. There you go. So we got this all set up. We would love for you to join. If you want to get to know me, if you want to get to know Pablo, if you want to get to know the rest of the community here and make this even more real for yourself, uh, reach out to Jen Filzen and um, we will hopefully see you guys there tomorrow. Now, here's the thing for everybody who's watching who is going. We got to start this tour on time. So that's really important. We want to get everything that we can in, into the tour. So what you want to do is show up at 1145. Uh, you're going to go to the Sweet Peats building in Jacksonville. You know who owns the Sweet Peats building? Who owns the Sweet Peats building? JWB owns the Sweet Peats building. What do you know? What a cool place to start. We're actually, so that's 400 North Hogan Street in uh, downtown Jacksonville, Florida. You want to be there at 1145. Now, when you show up, right, the tour is going to start 11.45, 12-ish, right there. We're going to hit the ground running. There's not going to be time for lunch. So prepare yourselves appropriately. Eat in advance if you'd like. And if you want to show up early, there's this amazing little spot, lunch spot called Fizzies and Fairs in the Sweet Peats building. And they serve lunch and you can get things on the, on the go. So if you want to get there early, I'm going to be there around 11.15 or so. Get there early, 11.15, 11.30. Put your order in, grab something on the go or eat before, um, and then the party's going to get started right at 1145-ish. Love it. Greg, I this is an absolute dream come true for me, right? Like we've kind of dabbled in this idea. I think when we, when we first started this project of the show, right, this Not Your Average Investor Show thing, it was all how can we build a community, Yeah. right? Like it really wasn't – that, that was the, the true North Star of what we're doing, and – I remember as the show started taking off, you're like, what do you think is next level? I'm like, networking events. And you're yeah. like, oh, no, I was thinking something different. And uh, it's taken us some time now, thanks to COVID. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we've had a couple small meetups. I like that we are doing it big, right? End of year two of this wonderful project that we've taken on together. You know, this this seems significant, right? Like I know Ken is flying in. He's Ken and Carolyn are celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary. I think Anthony did is coming in. It's his birthday. You know, it's, it's going to be cool. We got a couple questions here in the, in the chat. And by the way, I also got this combobulated. This is a community driven show. So use the chat to chat with each other and chat with us. There's a little trick. You got to put everyone at the top of the chat box so that you're not just talking to me and GC and Joanna. And um, if you want a question last live on the show, use the Q and a function. That's where, that's where everybody is popping in those questions so that it's easier for me to manage, which today is going to be a growing experience as I get used to this new setup again. We got a different layout and all this stuff, but I do see we got Nadim is in the house. He, had, he hadn't checked in by the time I did the roll call. Good to see you, Nadim. Who else we got? We got Anthony Dittas in the house. I think he's, he's hanging out also. Birthday boy. Birthday boy in the house. We got a question already in the Q&A by Daniel Lee. Any chance the tour will be recorded? Do you see you want to handle that wow, one? Wow, that is that is a perfect segue. Did you plant that question? I did not plant that yeah. question. Yeah. Pablo, Pablo, you know, hit me up last week and he's like, hey man, I think we should record this tour. And I'm like, dude, let's do it. Let's roll. So yeah, actually, we are gonna have uh the tour recorded. Um, and I don't know if the whole tour is gonna be recorded, but there's gonna be elements of the tour that are recorded. Um, we're even gonna be recording some of our conversations uh, when we sit down and talk a little shop at, at Casa Marina. Uh, for dinner and drinks after that too. So yeah, so we are certainly going to make the best of our audio visual capabilities on this one. Yeah. And um, you know, when I'm involved, I'm always going to push for content, right? Like I, I love the memorialization of things, the ability to share knowledge, the ability to like document stuff via content as a legacy. So we are bringing the guy that set up the studio, who is one of the most talented videographers in Jacksonville. Absolutely. He's going to be following us around on the tour is that we're going to make some content pieces at the end of the, of the party afterwards. We'll have like a nice narrative thing. I'm sure we're going to produce a, 
tour itself, mm -hmm. standalone mm -hmm. piece. So you're going to be able to see everything. We're also going to have, I'm sure we will, is people going live into our Facebook group mm -hmm. as it's happening, right? So it's going to get recorded and distributed afterwards. But if you're hanging out in our Facebook group, you're going to get lives from Jen Filzen. You're going to get lives from me. I'm going to make GC go live as well. I'm, I'm, I'm game. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure we're going to have multiple people going live inside the Facebook group. So if you're not part of our Facebook group yet, it's our community of over 3,000 people where we hang out virtually all the time. Uh, make sure that you do. Joanna, please put the uh, link in the, in the chat, but it's jwbfacebookgroup.com. Absolutely. And one final thing, <clears throat> parking. You are going to a downtown where parking is never easy in any downtown. Jacksonville is no different. So just plan accordingly. You're going to be driving around finding on-street parking. It's really cheap. You know, you just got to find it. You'll probably drive around for a little bit. So plan accordingly. We want you there by 1145 if you're ready to rock and roll for the tour. If you want to grab a quick bite from Fizzies and Fairs, get there 1115, 1130 and uh, prepare for an extra 15 minutes to park. Yeah, cool. All right. We've uh, beat that one. I'm just going to correct you real quick. You said that there's no sales pitch. I got to be honest, I'm going to sell you on going to karaoke after the happy hour. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a hard sell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen Pablo rock some karaoke, uh, you are going to want to, you're going to be an avid buyer of this. <laughs> All right, GC. So we've beat that one. I hope that uh, whoever wasn't going to join us has decided they were going to join us, right? If we get one more person out to this, to this thing, I think we're going to have at least like 20 people. So it's going to be fun. fun. That being said, bit, 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 we actually got breaking news on what we're talking about, rental property investing, not just partying and hanging out. GC, what do we got going on? Well, so this is a really cool time, right? We're, we're now JWB is through business planning, right? For JWB, that process starts really in September for us. And in October, we actually crystallize our business plan for 2022 and, and also the next three years, actually. And through that process, it starts this, you know, exploration for us of, okay, every part of our business, how can we refine? How can we, when it comes to uh, selling properties and property management, how can we set the right expectations? So this is kind of a normal occurrence for this time of the year to just take a deep breath, look back and say, okay, is there anything that we can do to improve? Well, one of the things that we looked at were our property evaluations. We do this, you know, routinely, I'd say every year we look at this and, and many times what we'll do is we'll make slight adjustments to maintenance costs or vacancy costs, right? And all that is due to the data based on the data that we have, right? We have another year of data. We have also our experience. We have other things that may be changing in the marketplace. And we say, well, is this a time to adjust that? Well, this time we also took a little bit of a deeper dive and we said, are there things that we can do to more accurately represent what an investor should return, what their return on investment and cash flow should be over the next five years, right? Or over the minimum hold period for what a JWB client would, would hold for. Um, and so today, I thought this would be a great opportunity for us to talk about some of those things that are going to be changing on the evaluations, talk through the why, talk through what the net effect is going to be. And, and I think this is, hopefully there's a lot of questions that come for you guys. I know many of, of all of our friends here who show up week in, week out, you guys are a part of the property of the week. You've seen this, this run through and your questions are fantastic. So this is a great time to ask, why did we change this? Why are we not changing this in the face of, you know, a world today that is different, especially when you think about inflationary pressures that we're seeing and, and how costs are affected that way. What are we doing to represent how we would treat your money for the next five years? And so that's, uh, that's what we did, man. Cool, man. So I got, a, I got an idea. I know that we've been figuring out how the best way to lay this out. I know that there's seven changes. Yes. Why don't we do this? Let's run through the seven changes. We're going to do each one individually. Okay. Then I'm going to pop in the property of the week and be able to, and, and just kind of like show it so that anybody that's showing up to see the property okay. can see it. And then we'll dive into questions that have to do with the changes or have to do with the property. And we do that. Do you think I go into detail about the why, or do you think we just go through the changes, then look at the property and then use that as sort of a backdrop? I don't know. Why don't we ask our community? I don't know. Let us, we'll let, figure it out let us know in the chat. Do you want us, do you want us to like integrate this into the property of the week? Or do you want us to just kind of go, I say right now we just start number one game on. All right. <laughs> so I think the first thing to, to realize here is for a property evaluation, right? This is a forward looking statement on how you think or how we think we're going to handle your money, right? What we're going to be doing is looking at historical data. We're also going to be looking at recent data as well. And we're also going to be using our experience to see in the, in the uh, economy or the environment that we're in, is that going to affect things? Um, are there initiatives that are put in place that should either increase or decrease costs?
that are going to be happening all along the way. So the goal here, what you'll see me tie back to many times is that the, the mission of a property evaluation is to project your return on investment accurately, realistically, and conservatively. We want to be an organization where when you give us your money, you're happy. And then when we return your money to you one year, three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years later, you're even happier because we hopefully, hopefully be, uh, beat that. And we want to do that. The, the property evaluation is over the minimum amount of time that we would expect a client to hold their property, which would be five years. If you're a fan of the show, you know that I advise that you hold on for a lot longer than that because that's where you get to take advantage of all five profit centers. But a property evaluation is built to represent the minimum, which would be a five-year hold for our clients. So I talked a lot, but I didn't That's even get the number that one. That was number one. All right. So, <laughs> so okay. So the frame, the frame is that. The frame is this idea that we are sometimes we're taking kind of like three sets of data: mm -hmm. backwards historical data, we're taking future-facing data and trends that are happening right now, mm -hmm. and then we're just taking experiential data and research that you've done and and yep. inferences that you've made because sometimes what's been happening for the last 10 years is not what's going to be happening for the ten, for the next 10 years, but it informs all pieces of the pie. Yeah. Right. Exactly. All right. Let's go to number one. Now, number one, do, 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 without further, further, uh, further ado, without, without further just go, ado. just go. There we go. Um, all right. Number one. And for all of you who are following at home uh, at jwbinventory.com, you can see this evaluation. You'll be able to see how this plays out. Um, we have moved to the second year of ownership as being the most representative of what a client will experience as far as their return on investment. So previous to this, it was your first year. And now what you'll see on your property evaluations is that your expected returns are actually based on what happens in year two. And so the reason that we're doing this is because again, this is the most accurate and realistic way to position what your return should be over the minimum five years. If you think about it, in the first year, there are a lot of variables that come into play that you don't have going forward. Some costs are higher than what would be expected every single year going forward, and some costs are lower than what would be expected going forward. So if we take it back to what we used to do, we would reflect year one. Well, in year one, we would have a full tenant placement fee. So the burden of the full tenant placement fee would be there. Now, if you think about it, JWB is great at signing long-term leases. When you sign long-term leases, the reason you do that is so you don't have a full tenant placement fee every year. And that's a great way for us to increase your returns over time. Um, so if we kept that full tenant placement fee in year one and reflected that in your overall returns, you know, that's, that's way too conservative. Like that's not really accurate. You know, you're not gonna have a tenant placement fee every year, uh, but that's the way it was before maintenance costs, we had the full burden of maintenance costs in year one. And that's not really accurate either. You know, generally you have less maintenance costs in your first year than you would have in year three or five or whatnot. So to have the full burden there, again, a little bit too aggressive, too conservative in that, in that regard. And then on the flip side, we didn't have anything for vacancy costs. Well, you shouldn't have a lot of vacancy costs in year one, but you know, we managed 4,500 properties. So, you know, do things happen? Does an early move out happen in your first year? Yeah, it absolutely can happen. So it would be better for us to reflect some portion of vacancy costs in year one. Um, so the change again is to move to year two. And in year two, we reflect the full vacancy cost, like we, um, like we have on our evaluations, the full maintenance cost, which we have on our evaluations. And then for a tenant placement fee, you know what we do is we take that full tenant placement fee and we divide it by Four. And the reason that we do that is because the average resident for JWB stays in place for four and a half years. And so by the averages, you would get a full tenant placement fee, one every four or five years, and it just lines up. So when you take all that into account, it's a much more reflective way to look at your first five years of ownership. Uh, and that's why we are now reflecting year two. Now, year one on your evaluations is still there. You can still get to see all the costs that are coming your way. Year one, you still have the full tenant placement fee on the evaluation. Uh, on maintenance and vacancy, we have dropped it to 20% of what you would expect in a normal year for your cost. And that's just to build in a buffer, you know, the fact that things do happen in your first year, even though you shouldn't see the full burden of maintenance and vacancy costs overall. So there's number one. 
All right. That was number one. So GC, we're at 1252. So I think we should show the property, mm -hmm. right? And that way we can kind of talk a little bit about it. And then let's dive back into these. I like that. Let's points. show it like actually on the evaluation. Cool. Yep. I, was, I was hoping you'd like that. Yeah. All right. So we magically whisked this away to 3138 Rayford Street. Um, I want to make a, a joke out of the the, the, the Rayford name like I normally do. It's, uh, I think of Rayford Austin, the Skip to Malou, the basketball player. I don't remember that, but that's too obscure. Anyways, we're in Rayford Street. It's a purchase price of 170000 Like we said, under two hundred k. That's a rarity these days on the show. The reason why, it's a renovation, right? Like we've been talking a lot about new construction homes and um, and this is a renovation that is rare to find these days based on the supply demand dynamics. It's a two bedroom, one bathroom house, estimated rent range around $1,125. And this got this total monthly cash flow in, in uh, conventional financing of $144 and an estimated conventional financing total ROI of 8886 I would love to hear in the chat, is this clear? Because in this new setup, I don't have the the same kind of like visibility of, of what it looks like. So let me know if the spreadsheet is clear. Lee Bishop, MVP of the community, coming through. He says it's clear. It's clear. Love that guy. So GC, when you're talking about this like two-year kind of thing, what what changed here? Yeah. So well, you first focus in on that estimated total monthly cash flow of $144, right? That's assuming there's conventional financing in place. And uh, that's what's going to happen on a typical month. You're going to have your rent coming in. You're going to have your typical expenses that go out and you're going to be left with, you know, around 150 bucks estimated on, 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 um, on a typical month for you. Now, uh, and then the next one below that is your total return on investment of just under 9%, right? 8.86%. Now that's taking into account all of the profit centers, not name home price appreciation. Um, and then taking in all the costs. Well, those two numbers were built off of year one data. So, Paul, if you wouldn't mind, go over to the analysis cash flow, uh, so the analysis conventional financing tab. Is this one? Yeah, and let's zoom in because, uh, man, those numbers get scary <laughs> for done. folks. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you would, go down to the bottom here. All right, you see that where it says year one? Oh, yeah, right there. So year one, right? Column F, right? Now, that used to be the way that we would project future cash flows. But as I mentioned, it wasn't the most realistic. Some were costs were too high, some were too low. What we've done is year two is now what's actually driving the summary evaluation. So if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see a little bit of a difference between year one projected return on investment and year two. Oh, yeah. Okay. So year two actually looks lower than year one. I would have thought that you would have cooked the books. Yeah. You know, you know, that's what most property rent, rental property company providers would do, right? They're looking at this, not just to project the best, uh, not to project the most realistic returns, they are of the mindset they have to show you the absolute best potential return on investment to get you to buy it. We are from a different breed. We want you to understand and be prepared uh, for what the return on investment is going to be. And then I want you even happier five years later when you own the property and you see that we beat that return on investment. So there you go. Okay. All right. So that's a good explanation. So now we're looking here. That's what reflects here in this summary. That's change number one. Should we move on to change number two? Change number two. All right. So the next thing. So for all of our friends who have been kind of following this year, um, we have announced some initiatives that are really going to drop maintenance costs and vacancy costs, right? We are doing this constantly, right? Const continuous improvement because I know your biggest pain points are going to be maintenance and vacancy costs. My team knows that. And we want to get better and better at that. Well, one of the things that we did this year is we rolled out a septic warranty program. And the reason that we did this is we look at the biggest cost drivers for maintenance costs. And what we found is that septic tanks or drain fields that need to get, in, uh, uh, need to get replaced is a big cost driver. It might cost six, eight, 10 grand if you are an owner of a septic property and the thing goes out after five, 10 years of ownership or whatnot. So we said, all right, well, how can we attack this? What we did is we came up with a septic warranty program. We built this out with our vendor base, and we also implemented this so that um, our residents are going to take part in absorbing some of the cost, which actually makes sense, as I'll kind of walk you through in just a second. Um, prior to this, if you had a, a septic tank and it went out, unfortunately, that'd be on you, and that's why your, res your maintenance cost might be higher for a septic property. Now, for any property that you purchase that has a, a, a new septic tank, a drain field, which almost every single property that JWB will sell will have one of those. 
Um, if that drain field of that septic tank goes out, you don't have a cost. It's covered, 100%. Um, in addition to this, this does not increase your monthly cost. It's not like a normal warranty program where you pay a few hundred bucks a year for this effect. Um, when you think about it, residents who are on septic are not paying for normal sewer charges, right? That they would have if the property was on sewer, right? Because the residents are, or utilities are a resident's responsibility. So it made sense now for us to actually have that septic warranty cost be borne by the resident to make things equal as if they were a typical sewer. Um, if, the, if their property was on city sewer, they would be paying it for the utilities. So it all works out into this beautiful equation. Um, and it's been incredibly successful for this year. Now, with the backdrop of that, now when we look at what changes we can make to be more reflective for our owners uh, who are buying these properties, like this one on Rayford, in the past, we separated and had a different maintenance expense cost for a reno property that was on septic than if the reno property was on city sewer. Septic properties had a higher expectation for maintenance costs. It was 9%. Now, based on what I just laid out, it is real, it is very realistic to assume that septic properties are going to perform like sewer properties. And so now we have eliminated the need to have a different maintenance cost percentage for septic versus sewer. You're going to see that those are combined now, simpler for everybody, and ultimately is more reflective of how this should play out for, for you if you own a renovated property. Okay. So as I go to share this thing again, what I hear more than anything, there's two things. I hear a cost that I, as an investor, used to have to burden is now passed through to the resident. That sounds good. And the other thing I hear is uh, something that used to be kind of like a unpleasant thing, this idea of a septic tank that is kind of a wild card in the world of home ownership and yeah. you know, home, home, home investing. Uh, has been normalized. Yes, exactly. And if you take it one step farther, right, it is tough to find inventory right now. If you're out there and you're trying to buy turnkey properties, you go to anybody else other than JWB, you're on waiting lists. And it's because the cost of properties is so high right now for providers, even like JWB, that they can't meet their demand. Well, when you do this, now JWB can pay actually a little bit more for a property that's on septic when we buy it, mm. right? If you, yeah. if you go away, buy, yeah. so this is another measure for us to unlock inventory. One of the ways that we have two to three years of inventory for our clients is that that's our goal at all times so that you guys can come here and not have a waiting list for uh, properties. If you want to purchase this one, it's not on a waiting list. Um, in fact, you got to ask me why I love this property, by the way, I'll do that. In a I forgot to ask. Yeah, that. you got to tell me. It has to do with that. Um, no restrictions, no waiting list. Well, it's because we're constantly coming up with initiatives like this that, you know, help clients, help residents, help unlock inventory. And we're pretty good at it. All right. So I'm going to ask you that question. First, let's talk about where does this septic program show up in this wonderful little sheet that we got here? Well, where it, where it would show up is your maintenance rate. So if this property were on septic, Last year or two months ago, when we showed a property like this, it would have had a 9% expected maintenance rate. It would have been 9%. And that's based on septic costs being higher over the years because of what I just described. Now, there's only one cost, no matter if it's septic or sewer. Um, and you can see that outline on the property valuation in row 32, column B right there. We, we let you know if it's on septic or sewer, right? This one... If it's on septic or sewer, it doesn't matter now. You're going to have one consistent uh, maintenance rate. I'm trying to show it all on one screen without it getting too small or too blurry. But yeah, you see that it's sewer, it's 7.5%, and that is the same rate that you would normally see, right? Absolutely. All right, GC. I, uh, I think we ask why you like this property. Then we go into some of this Q&A, and then we go dive back into these, uh, these things that, Love we, it. that we got. So I love this property because it is a renovation. And we talk a lot about, do we love renovated properties? Do we love new construction properties? What are the pros? What are the cons? I love them both because I love anything that can produce the best risk-adjusted return on investment for me. New construction and renovations will have slightly different things that make them better or less appealing. 
And we could go through some of those things if we want today. That might be a good discussion. If you guys would like me to go through some of those things, put it in the chat or in a QA, and I'm happy to do that. But let me highlight one thing that definitely makes a difference for renovations, all right? For new construction, when you buy the land, when you buy the property from JWB, JWB has already bought the land and has already started the construction on the house. But it might take four to six months to build that house right? So you're putting it under contract and you're not going to close for generally about four to six months later. That's just the state of things. It's not ideal. I don't like it that way. It hasn't always been that way, but when you have demand that is outstripping supply over what, overall, that's what you're left with. So for new construction, you have a longer wait period until you can actually close on the house. For renovations, you don't have that waiting period, right? For this property, the renovation on this one is scheduled to be completed in mid-January. You could close on this property in January or early February if I'm building in some buffer time. So you're talking two months or less, not four to six months. And the way that that actually makes a difference beyond just the, the better thing of buying it quicker and getting on with building your portfolio, it really makes a difference when you think about interest rates. Interest rates are going to go up in 2022. That's what we're hearing across the board. We're hearing it from the Fed. Um, they're beginning tapering, which means that eventually that's a, that's a leading indicator that interest rates are going to go up at some point. That's what they're saying. Um, so if you can buy the property today, like for somebody, if they wanted to put this property under contract today, we can immediately get you started on your loan. You typically don't want to lock in your interest rate when you're going under contract for a loan for longer than 45 or maybe 60 days. So you can actually put this under contract, uh, start your loan process, lock your ridiculously low interest rate today and not have that risk of interest rates going up, which is something that is there for new construction properties. There's no way around it. All right, man. That sounds like, uh, it sounds like an attractive property. Is this one available right now? If I go to chat with JWB, am I able to uh, scoop it up? You know, I never double check right before yeah, the show. Check, right? I'll check on my cell phone. I'll I'll figure it out for us here. Okay. Well, as you figure it out, we got a question. It's kind of, you know, related since we're talking about these properties and whatnot. And it's a, it's a name. I'm a little nervous to butcher here, but I'm going to give it my best shot. We got Chukwameka Okoye, who is new to the show. Welcome Chukwameka. I hope I am doing some justice to your name here. And uh, the question is, hey guys, I'm just joining in. My question is, what can 30K investment do and how much return can that generate monthly? Also, would like more info. Chukwameka, the first thing is, if you want more info, chat with jwb.com. That's the perfect place to go. But uh, maybe you can give a shot at this uh, 30K answer. I'd like to take a stab at the name too. Chukwameka. I love that name. It, it depends if we're pronouncing the U sound correctly okay. or not. I feel like the rest of it, I'm feeling, Okay. We, right. we so appreciate you being here. Um, and so thank you for that question here. Your question, what can we do with $30,000? Well, there's some limitations with $30,000. Uh, because for this type of an asset, this isn't a no money down deal or even a, a, a low money down deal. Um, the assets that you'd be investing in here are what I call typical vanilla type of loans that would be backing this. Um, and that means that you're going to put either 20 or 25% down for your loan. Your average purchase price is you know, about 225,000. So you're thinking all in to buy your first rental property here in Jacksonville with JWB, you're looking at about $50,000 all in. Now, I hope that doesn't discourage you from thinking that rental property investing is in your future, in the near future. There are a number of ways that you can actually buy properties. Um, you know, I'll give you a couple of examples and we actually have videos of this in our Facebook group. So I'd, I'd encourage you to become a member of the Facebook group if you're not yet. Um, but you might be able to look at your retirement accounts. That's a place where you actually might have capital that's unlocked, that you can unlock and actually invest in rental properties. You can actually partner with yourself. You can have your retirement accounts be part of the, the purchase of the property and, and you can have capital outside of the retirement account and actually pro partner with yourself. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know that. Yeah, you're, you're giving that's, me those eyebrows. Like, that, wow. That, that's not one of those. I feel like we started kind of talking about that recently, but that's not one of those things that you told me about a year and a half ago on an early morning. I'm run. just bringing you along slowly. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can do that. You can partner with uh, other investors. Uh, you can partner. Like the first rental property I ever purchased, I partnered with my dad. That's how we did it. 
And uh, my dad actually is going to be on the tour tomorrow, by the way. Excited to see Pops. I'm pumped to meet him. I know he was yeah. a big uh, influence in your financial nerdiness. Yeah, yeah. He's he's the, the king nerd of, <laughs> of all of this. This is where my nerdiness comes from. Cool. Um, private lending might be another opportunity for you. Uh, Chukwameka. So uh, you will definitely want to get on the horn with my team. We can guide you in any way. Uh, it may not be buying a rental property for you today, uh, but starting your journey, pointing you in the right direction, potentially private lending might work. Um, I hope you reach out to us. Okay, there you go. And by the way, we pronounced it correctly. First shot. So, Perfect. Way to go. Yeah. Woo, Let's huge. go. All right. Yeah, we take we take real pride in that, Chico Mega. So it's not like we're not lampooning you with a name. I, I'm just like really nerdy about pronouncing that. And I always just default to Spanish when it's a foreign name. And it, it worked. So got the you sound right. All right. We got a couple more questions here, GC. Lee Bishop, MVP of the Natural Average Investor Show community, asked, did I hear you right, Greg? That septic program is an insurance program, so no costs to owner? You heard right. It is the best type of insurance program. It is one where you don't have to pay the premium. Um, you know, this is a program where the septic costs for all new septic tanks that are that are um, put in for either new construction or renovated properties are covered under the septic warranty program. And so uh, your resident pays the premium for that, uh, which is very similar to what they would pay to for utilities for if they had city sewer. And so this works out beautifully. So yes, you are covered. Uh, and then your resident is actually putting the bill. Uh, and that is right in line with what the expectations would be for them for typical monthly cost for utilities. There you go. Right on. That is the best type of insurance program. All right. We've got a return, <laughs> a return community member yes. all the way from France. His name is Anonymous Attende. And Anonymous asks, how can an out-of-state buyer do the home inspection on the property? Uh, great question. Uh, so home inspections for you, whether you're here in Jacksonville or if you're out of state, it's really easy to do. Or in France. Or <laughs> if you're in France, I forgot, Just right? Yeah. Um, uh, especially if you're in France, so home, home inspections are easy to do. Yeah. So if a home inspection is important for you to do, uh, we could recommend a list of home inspectors. Uh, we make it very easy. We facilitate that process during the closing process. We really facilitate the entire closing process. So that's one of the easiest things to facilitate. And um, and yeah, so that's, uh, that's an easy one. Easy peasy. All right. Anonymous has another question, a newbie question. Is that, is, is that better to buy when interest rate is low or high, but house cost is low? Oh, okay. So is it better to buy when interest rate is low and pricing is high, or is it better to buy when uh, pricing is high and interest rate? Uh, you know? I love this question. It's a good question. This is a great I, question. I didn't know how to ask it, but yeah. I think you got it. Well, it's a great question. The, the reading of the question wasn't so great. Not the I best. Mean, <laughs> The, uh, this is, this is a great question. Uh, and I think it just drives to the core of what I have been saying for the last year and a half in this low interest rate environment. If there's one quote that I've said more than probably any starts, it has a lot of de alliteration in it. What do you think I've said most on the show? A lot of D, a lot of de alliteration. I don't decidedly no. Now, now you guys know we don't rehearse this. Nothing on this show is rehearsed, by the way. Um, the deal is the debt. The deal is the debt. The deal is the debt, right? The deal is the debt. And that's why I am saying today, the very best time to be buying properties is right now. I think it is better to be buying and building your rental property portfolio today than it will be in two years, three years, four years. And the biggest reason for that is because of the cost of debt. And so to answer your question, the number one thing that I'm looking at to create generational wealth is how easily and how inexpensively can I tap into other people's money in a way where my, in a risk mitigated way where I'm still producing positive cash flow. Uh, but when I tap into other people's money, I'm able to benefit from all five profit centers much more. Um, and when you lock in your interest rates, if you have an interest rate in the threes, or in the low fours, which is like what you get right now on investment properties in Florida, like that asset, the, the, the debt is the asset. Like the debt is the asset. I know people think the debt is the liability, but the debt is the asset because you now are locking in an interest rate of, let's say 4% for the next 30 years if you want it. You know, Pablo, do you think that you could easily find other things, other investments that you could use 4% money on and earn more than a 4% return? 
Yeah, I could think of a handful. Yeah, we could think of a lot that are like on the screen right now, right? Yeah. You know, much more than 4%. And you are, you are allowing yourself to be able to do that for 30 years. Like people in this country do not understand that that's not normal. Like you, going to other countries, they don't have 30-year mortgages. And they definitely don't have them at interest rates like we have here today. So thank you for allowing me to wax poetic a little bit here on, on the debt side. But I, I believe that the reason that this is the best time to be buying rental properties is because of debt. So if I had to choose between low prices and low interest rates, I'm going to go with low interest rates. Part of that is also because I've been through a market cycle here. I know after 20 years, on average, you're going to get about 4% appreciation, 4 4 4.5% average appreciation each year. So like that in my mind is already set as long as I'm in the game a long time. Interest rates can go way up. I mean, my interest rates when I start, started to first buy properties was seven and a half, eight percent on my conventionally financed mortgages. So thank you again. I, I hope, hope, hope everybody kind of gets that gist. Like the deal is the debt here. Yeah, and I remember when we first started with that wonderful alliteration of yours first started really showing up. And it was when we had Rich Ritchie on the show, mm -hmm. probably around like summer of last year. I'm asking Joanna to see if she can find it. Um, she's got a she's got a link. I can't I can't click on it to see Joanna, but if it's Rich Ritchie, it's the right one to share. Um, he is a VP of mortgage at a Truist. national bank. True, I don't know if you want to drop the name. Yeah, mm -hmm. at Truist, like you know, he's a big dog over there. And him and his wife had bought properties in the past and all of a sudden started gobbling them up real quick. So we brought him on a show to ask him why. And he's like, when I look at what's happening with mortgage rates, I realize that there is a generational wealth opportunity, unlike things that we've never seen before or things that you get to see like once in a, you know, once or twice in a lifetime kind of thing. So he's been jumping all over it. Him and Whitney have been just gobbling up properties. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So um, I hadn't really thought about the idea that the average appreciation rate is 4.3% and you're financing at 4%. So de facto, whatever, yeah. you know, you're essentially picking it up for free. Um, if you are in it for the long run and you are getting that and well, you're getting that appreciation. Let me take it one step farther. Yeah. If you're using, if you're getting that interest rate, it means you're using debt. So if it appreciates at 4.3% and you put 25% down, you're earning 16% on that and you're borrowing it at 4%. House money. House money, baby. House money, baby. Mm -hmm. Let's go. It's house money because you're getting a house. <laughs> house, house money. <laughs> That's house, house money. <laughs> I like it. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's jump back into some of your uh, yeah, we got some, get some of your things. All right, number three. Number three. All right. So what you guys probably saw there on the evaluation sheet as we were talking about the maintenance rate percentage uh, was that the maintenance rate percentage is different. All right, for renovated properties that were sewer on city sewer. Uh, prior to this, they were at 6%. Now what we are projecting and what we're seeing here now is 7.5% is what we're expecting for your, for your property. So how did we come to this? Well, again, we look at historical data. We also look at the most recent data within JWB. And then we take a look at kind of the environment that we're in, the inflationary environment that we're in. Um, we also did a study. We did market research and we talked with some of our connections at some of the best property management companies uh, in the country. Uh, turnkey rental property companies, and uh, other institutional uh, clients that specialize in real estate. And the results were really telling uh, for a number of reasons, kind of reinforced what we thought kind of best in class maintenance percentages would be. We had to kind of triangulate the data because the data sources are not all, all exactly the way that we would like them to be. Um, different people calculate different things differently. Uh, but seven and a half percent for us is kind of best in class is what we established from the companies that we um, conducting market research on, we also found a lot of things like a lot of these property management companies, again, don't track maintenance costs. If they do track maintenance costs, they don't pay attention to it. They certainly don't put it on a show like this every single week. Um, and the most egregious thing is that if they do track and they do pay attention to it, there are a lot of companies out there that are telling fibs. They're telling shots fibs. fired. A lot of companies out there are telling fibs. I believe it. Um, they knowingly uh, know that their costs are higher than what they represent. And um, that's, I don't know, that's, won't name any names, but uh, I have known that for a while. And, and that was certainly confirmed there. So 
anyways, seven and a half percent is kind of best in class. Uh, and that's kind of what we're seeing over the last year as well. Now it's gone up from 6% to 7.5%. Why is that? Well, it's the inflationary environment we're in. Construction costs, both of labor and materials have been going up, right? We saw what happened with lumber, right? Well, lumber is not the only thing that is going up. All construction materials are going up and labor. Um, and we expect that to continue to happen as we go into 2022. Uh, so that's why when we project forward for the next five years, we're seeing 7.5% for all renovated properties. Got it. So, uh, you know, I heard, a, I heard a word there that we talked a lot about this morning that is triangulate. And that is that we kind of just mentioned it, right? There's this idea that the triangle is previous performance, market research, personal experience. And that allows you to look backwards and then estimate forward, right? Well, I would, the market research is just something we do on top of it. The, the real try you're talking about like quadratic equations if we're, if we're if we're doing quad quadratic equations um daddy cohen's got to be proud today <laughs> so we're looking at historical performance which uh -huh. comes from our client roi report we're looking at most recent performance so typically over the last year mm. we're looking at that data mm. as okay. well and okay. then we're looking at you know that's then we're looking at experience right what do we see in the overall economy right now um, what initiatives have we implemented that mm. should have a uh, an effect on these costs one way or another um, yeah, so and that's, that's how we triangulate it. And then we sprinkle a little bit of mar market research on there when, when necessary. Okay. All right, man. Well, we got a bunch more Q and A. Do you see, I, I got, I got bad news for you. I don't know if we're going to get to all seven of these, man. Is that a big deal? I don't know. Throw it out to the team. <laughs> Throw it out to the community. I mean, we, I, I could be happy to do a video afterwards going through all seven of these yeah, yeah, in, we, in the Facebook group. And we can hit these again. I think, I think this is a good Tuesday show. Just like, I kind of like this whole like number one, number two thing. I'm having a good time with it. Right. Just, just well, let's see it. what everybody says. If they, if they want me to go through them, we'll, we'll save a little time. If not, we'll get to the question. Cool. All right. Let us know in the chat if you want us to get through these seven things or we can just parse it out. In the meantime, I want to give Q&A because if you're making time out of your schedule to show up, let's answer your questions, right? So Nadeem Shah has a question here. He's asking, when financing, I know the lender requires an appraisal, but no property inspection. So knowing JWB does the remodel and I am sure they do an inspection of the property before they offer to an investor, so the investor does not need to spend money to have an inspection done. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the typical line of thinking for JWB clients. I mean, this sale that you would be taking part in, it's much different than a typical real estate purchase and sale where you don't know the seller, where you don't have a level of trust, where you haven't probably purchased three or five or 10 properties from those, those individuals. And where those individuals aren't responsible for showing up month in and month out and year in and year out and, and hitting those expectations. Um, and so, yeah, most folks do not get a home inspection when they purchase a property with JWB. If it's important to you, we're happy to facilitate it. Uh, but most clients don't, especially um, as we build more and more of that trust over time. Um, I will say though, another reason why clients don't get home inspections is because we, we talk about what the purpose of a home inspection is. You know, We have licensed GCs on our team Right. And then, of course, the folks that are actually doing the work on your property or license as well. Um, and um, when you get a home inspection, every home inspection that you order is going to come back with something. And we explain to our clients early on in this process that if you want to get a home inspection, we're going to we're going to support it. It's going to be it's perfectly fine with us. But if the home inspection comes back with cosmetic items that will not affect your return on investment long term, then we're not going to fix those things because that's just wasting money, right? Like sometimes clients are able to buy homes that have a resident in place. It happens every once in a while. Well, when they go and they do a home inspection and there might be blinds that maybe, I don't know, there's a blind that's messed up or something like that. Well, that's a cosmetic thing. When your resident is going to be staying there for another four years, right? That is going to show up again when your resident leaves after four years. We would just be correcting something, throwing money after something that ultimately is not going to save you in your return on investment. So we openly discuss that with clients early on, that even if you do a home inspection and it comes back with something that is um, cosmetic in nature, you know, we're probably not going to fix that. Of course, if there was a major issue that came back and that we missed something, we absolutely would take care of it. So putting all those things together, most clients actually do not get a home inspection. That's uh, that's great that we got to to talk about that, right? Because I know we got new folks with us today on the show. So it's it's this idea that JWB, you and your three partners are rental property 
investors. Mm -hmm. You all own 300 plus of your own properties right alongside these properties. And you have a data flywheel that you have been religiously attached to that tells you the stuff that you spend money on is stuff that drives ROI. Mm -hmm. This is not rookie investing time, right? So it's like you send a home inspector out and he's like, well, you know, this is happening. That's happening. You're going to look at it from the, from the standpoint of, is this going to increase the return on my investment? Or is this just something that a home inspector would fix if it was his own home? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If and he that, was living in the And home. that process started well before that home was ready for an inspection. That's part, that started when we did the scope of work, when we did the original renovation on the home or the new build on the home. So, um, so yeah, you, you certainly have that expertise with you. Cool. Love it. Uh, we've got six more questions. And for the record, the community has spoken. They're saying that we should just dive into the Q&A. We can hit these points love later. It. All right. I love it too. So I love Q&A. That's my favorite. So Anana Musa Tende has another question. The average 4.3% appreciation rate is for how many years? Great question. That actually is the average annualized appreciation rate every year. And where that data is coming from since 1991 all the way to present day, if you took the average, or I'm sorry, if you took the property values, the real prices, the median home sales prices in Jacksonville, and you saw from 1991 to, you know, 2000, they kind of went up and then 2001 to 2006, they went way up and then 2006 to 2011, they went down again and then they've gone way up again. You took all of that, you took those price points uh, and you annualize those, the average appreciation rate every year is 4.3%. And so that is such a critical understanding there, because if, if you believe that real estate cycles tend to repeat themselves, which by definition, that's what a cycle is, right? Things come back to the norm. Um, and you know that that happens, you have data to support that, then when you're evaluating which market to invest in, or even what asset class to invest in, or even to purchase with cash or conventional financing, you, know, you, can, you, can, you can have a pretty good idea of what your average uh, appreciation rate is going to be for your property that you buy today if you hold on for the next 20 years. Got it. So 4.3% is the average home price appreciation over a full market cycle in Jacksonville. Lee made a funny point here in the chat. He goes, oh no, where's the graph? And I thought you did a really good job of showing the graph, right? We have this graph that we've shown multiple times on past shows, including the last show uh, where we went deep or the, maybe last week, it was uh, the market the market research one, right? Mm -hmm. So Joanna, if you can show um, last week's Q4 uh, market update right? yeah, that the real estate market update yeah yeah if you can share that one on youtube uh people can see that graph really well and something right so the question is 4.3 percent for how much there is also the the idea that right now homes are appreciating at a much higher rate than that right so it's They're like in a in a in a long-term thing it's 4.3 percent that may have been kicked up based on kind of like what's happening depending on the on, on the one that you look at and moving forward and all these macro trends but Greg is always under promising over delivering. So they use 4.3% appreciation rate as life of the investment if you're in it for 10 to 20 years. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, right on. So speaking of Lee, who is the MVP of our community, he had a question early on that I, that I missed. Sorry, buddy. He asks, insurance is 988, which is a little high for this house. Is that going to be negotiable at purchase? Let me throw it back on. I would love for that cost to be to be lower. I, the chances of you being able to get that cost lower is pretty, pretty slim because we've already done that for you. Uh, of course, Lee, you know, we work with the Richie Insurance Group and part of our working relationship is them seeing these assets even before we actually complete the renovations, pricing out across multiple carriers and seeing what's the lowest and best premium that we can get for you. Um, so in theory, yeah, we could, we can do that. You actually, you can, you get to speak with the insurance team as well. The Richie insurance team is who we, who we recommend. Um, and we would put you in contact with them. And sometimes your insurance needs will be a little bit different than somebody else's, right? You, you know, we're going to recommend what coverage you, you need, but you may decide to do a little bit less or a little bit more. You have some of those things. So there's ways to adjust the cost down. Uh, but, but generally most folks will go with their policy that we would use. And um, that is, is definitely the rate that was found through our extensive research with the ins Richie insurance team. So probably not. There you go. And you might recognize that Richie name because she's married to Rich Richie, who we just talked about. They're very close members of the JWB family. She's actually the reason why I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> right. I know. Funny she's a story. super connected. Yeah, it's a funny story. So if you get on with her, she will tell you the origin of how me and Greg met because it was through her. So a little, little incentive. 
All right, here we go. Dean Curry's got a question. In an email I received from GC today, the subject line says, you've got 30 days to save. The email suggests that if we buy a property before the end of this year, we can write off the closing costs this tax year. I assume this time frame would only work for cash purposes. Otherwise, we would run out of time for finance purchases. Is that correct? You never know. We do have some properties that can be purchased that actually can be closed on by the end of the year. Uh, but your point is really valid. It's less likely as we sit here today than, you know, you know, a process three months ago for you. Uh, we need to find a renovated home and it would have to be completed. Now, I, I haven't looked at the inventory sheet today, but I remember looking last week and we had one of those properties. So it is possible for sure. Um, and then if you do that, what you do is what, what you're able to do from a tax perspective is you're able to write off the closing costs this year. And when you multiply that times your marginal tax rate, that, that puts, you know, 1500, maybe $2,000 of tax savings in your pocket just for doing it by December 31st, rather than doing it January 1st of 2022. So your point's valid. It's less likely, but it's still possible. And yeah. so if that's something you'd like to take advantage of, just chat with the team. You know, I'm glad you asked that question because I'm really looking forward to subtracting my closing costs from the two properties I picked up this year. It's going to be an tax awesome returns. tax year for you, bro. <laughs> Super pumped. It's going to be an awesome tax Let's go. year Daddy, needs, Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> All right. Raj Bantu's got a question. GC, let's, let's rapid fire right now. Okay. Are the new maintenance cost projections for properties bought going forward or for existing properties too? When we sign a three-year lease, rents are locked up, but labor costs vary for the next three years based on inflation and other factors. Great question, Raj. So the answer to your question as far as the property evaluations today are what do I expect your cost to be over the next five years? That would be the minimum holding period. So that's what we project going forward. Now, Raj, I know you've purchased properties with us in the past, and thank you for, for your trust with that. Now, one way to make sure that we're held accountable in the past is those evaluations those maintenance percentages that we showed to clients in the past are still there. And on your client ROI report, your expected returns at your type of time of purchase has not changed at all. So what we set out for you in the past is exactly what we expect to hit. So it's kind of the best of all worlds, right? We use the most accurate data that we can at that time. And then we set it in stone for your purchase. And then we have to meet or beat that is our goal for you. Now, going forward for purchasing a property today, now we have better information. And so we're able to predict even more accurately, we believe. And so for you, for you to purchase this one today, it would affect and be future looking. All right. Another question. Raj Bantu asks, are the properties built by third-party builders contractors or are they JWB employees? Great question. They are built by third-party builders. All right. That's rapid fire right there. Mm -hmm. Roger Evans asks, does JWB provide the potential investor with a detailed breakdown sheet of what was done to a renovated home? Great question, Roger. Yes, we do. Rapid fire. Dude, I'm really, I'm really proud of you, man. I can do this. <laughs> you can do this. Uh, this has been a lot of fun, buddy. This, is, this has been a good one. Um, I wish we could have gotten through all these, but I, I really enjoyed going, talking about the meetup that we're having tomorrow. If you're not coming to that and you're anywhere close by, I beg you reconsider. It's going to be a good time. Uh, you know, I, like I like I've taken this downtown tour. We get on these scooters. We learn about all this really exciting stuff that's happening in downtown. Then we go to Casa Marina. It's a rooftop in a historic hotel overlooking the beach. It's uh, it's a good time to be here with really really great people. So I hope that you join us. If you came here to find out about owning rental income properties, nailed it. We nailed it. If you came to find out about best in class property management. Nailed it. And about not so best in class property management. We yeah. talked a little bit about that too. Threw a little shade. And if you uh, came to find out uh, an edge on the Jacksonville real estate market, I think we talked a little bit about that. I think so. But if I you want to know more about any of that, go to chat with JWB.com and start a conversation with the team. You won't regret it. GC, I got I to gotta read off uh, uh, something here that Lee sent us. He says, uh, Pablo, love you two together. What a positive difference it makes for the show. And I responded, you know, it's a, it's a little bit harder for me to do all this while we're here, yeah. but it's so much more fun, man. Yeah. I, I really do enjoy the fact that we're back in studio, the fact that we're doing this stuff. And uh, I'm really pumped for tomorrow, man. I've, I have to, like, I get to see like all of the moving and shaking and wheeling and dealing that you're doing. And the fact that you're still actively engaged in this show beyond all the stuff that you're handling is incredible. You are a master, the most master of master of ceremonies. <laughs> Let's I'm go. I'm impressed, brother. I'm impressed. 
All right. I forgot what my outro is, but you know, we never take it for granted that you take an hour of your day to join us here for the show. It, it just like the community makes it. We've had 40 people on this whole time. Uh, Chukwamega, welcome welcome to the family. Anonymous, you sounded like a new person. So maybe you uh, come here, join us from France one of these days and, and let us know your real name. But hope to see you on the next one. What do we got coming up on Tuesday? Did you see? I don't even have it up, man. I, I, I forgot what it was. Oh, our buddy Andy. Our buddy Andy. Yeah, man. Tell me more. Well, I mean, I'd love to hear. It's your buddy, man. I know, I know his story. Oh, Andy Storch. I, I was, yeah. I literally had no idea who you were talking about. So I was just testing. <laughs> I mean, I know Andy, but you're yeah, close to Andy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Andy, man, what a fascinating guy, right? So, Andy, number one, he is this career expert, and he consults for Fortune 500 companies on how to give tracks. He wrote this book called "Own Your Career, Own Your Life," and it's all about putting yourself in the best position to succeed. And where that comes in for, for investing is, number one, getting yourself financially prepared for, for investments. Two, building your network and the things that that can do, right? It very closely ties into real estate. And if you need a new, a new kickstart for the next year, Andy's going to give it to you. On top of that, Andy's become an, a bit of an NFT expert. Mm -hmm. So we're going to dive into NFTs. And he also has this really compelling story, right? Andy, Andy had this like really public fight with cancer last year and the way that he handled it and the way that he was able to kind of like come out of it on the end is really, really inspiring. So it's going to be a really, really fun conversation with Andy. I'm, I'm excited. I've gotten to know him a little bit over the last few weeks and learned about his story. It's inspiring. Um, it'll be certainly entertaining and there's going to be a sprinkle of new asset classes that we always like to discuss on Tuesday. I'm super pumped to learn more about uh, non-fungible tokens, NFTs, uh, and, and how you can invest and put that in your financial portfolio. So I'm stoked, man. All right, buddy. Send us off. Well, thank you all for being here. I super hope I get to see you guys uh, tomorrow as a part of the tour. And uh, thanks for being here with me, buddy. Appreciate you learning a new routine again, yet again. And thank you all for being with us. We'll catch you hopefully tomorrow and definitely next Tuesday.